Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Tactical Games Podcast. Uh, my name's Nick. I'm here with Ro today, our special guest. How's it going? Usually uh, on the opposite side of the soundboard and uh, video board, and now he's out here on the podcast with us. How's it feel to be out here? It is. It's it's like a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, kind of a special episode today. We're coming to you after uh, our return from South Carolina. Um, those of you that were involved in that match are probably aware we had to postpone it. Um, let's talk a little bit about what happened the week leading What up. didn't happen? <laughs> we got there. I mean, we've had, we have had every kind of inclement weather to date, like floods, sandstorms, like that. Um, We've, I, I don't know what else, but just, you know, torrential downpours. Tornadoes, which is we wind. Had. Yeah. We've had a lot of wind. We've lost quite a few tents. We almost lost Amanda one time when she was hanging on to a tent, tent uh, while there was wind in Utah last year. Yep, yep. So um, this, was, this was something else. I've never – it didn't even – when it was happening, it didn't really feel like it was like what we saw when we tried to leave the property – no, no, no. So let, let's Start bring it back a couple yeah, days yeah, yeah. before that. Um, all right. So we left here Sunday. Sunday. Intending on going to B- the Bass Pro Shop Hotel and stopping there for a night on the way on the drive through, mm. uh, only to find out Sunday morning that we weren't actually going through Memphis at all. Um, so that was a logistical error on my part. Um, we ended up staying that night in Jackson, <sighs> Mississippi, I think. Billy's here, um, one of our dogs. She's added some commentary. Um, so we, I think we stopped in Jackson, Mississippi that night at a yeah. Holiday Inn or something like that. Um, and uh, continued on. Uh, got to Sawmill Monday evening. Uh, the team – or midday, I'm sorry. Stopped – had a little stop on our way. Um, got out to Sawmill. And uh, the rest of the team arrived Monday night. So we started our setup Monday. The rest of the team got there Monday night. Tuesday morning, started setup like the real setup and i think pretty soon after we got there tuesday morning it started raining no no wednesday was our first rain i think like towards the end of the day on yeah tuesday was actually nice out there do you remember what happened on tuesday yeah i just remember bugs (laughs) and swatting at my face constantly and and then like as soon as you get to one of these places and you realize like the shit there's bugs and you're like just stay calm just take a deep breath And then that first deep breath you take has got gnats in it. Yeah. So you immediately lose your shit. Yep. We saw everybody break within the first 10, 15 minutes. Gil Gil lost it immediately. So for those (laughs) of you that know James Gill, um, James (laughs) Gill is unbreakable at most times, uh, unless there are a bunch of tiny little gnats around his face. So Gil finally broke. I think we saw it for the first time. Uh, Gil broke, and it it made me feel a little bit better because I broke. I broke many times. It was good to see him finally. There, there is no human on this planet that can deal with that for more than five minutes and not <laughs> just be. Like, I mean, they're like they're not biting you. No, no, no. no. They're just like right in your fucking ear just, or in your eyeball. Yeah. Like, oh, in, that, in that, that burns little, like yeah. jalapeno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that was Tuesday. So all day Tuesday we were fighting, fighting the gnats. But we got the weather wasn't really that bad. It was no, it was actually kind of beautiful out. Humid, it's a little, a little hot, a little humid. Yeah. Yeah. But we got everything done pretty much. And then we went in, that was Wednesday? Wednesday, I think, is when the rain started. Thursday and Friday, it rained. Uh, well, no, That's I, what so it was. Because on Wednesday, we were like, let's try to get as much of this done as possible so we're not having to do it. And then the guys, the guys decided that, hey, it's kind of a pain in the ass to fill 6,000 pounds of sandbags. So they had this crazy idea about hiring some uh, local workers to come in and help us out with that so thursday morning when they were sitting in the rain doing it over again we decided that was a horrible fucking idea <laughs> so uh that is all right so the rest of the ro's got in wednesday night wednesday, night, yeah. wednesday throughout the day and wednesday night and um thursday morning started the the rain adventure then we'll mm. call it thursday morning is when we when it non-stop. started non-stop non-stop from the time we arrived until we departed and long after that it rained and it wasn't just like little rain it was big old sideways rain and fat rain fat rain big old fat rain you name it we saw that kind of rain and it was either a lot of rain or a medium amount of rain it was never like oh it's drizzling outside it was just raining or downpouring it was a lot or way a lot (laughs) yeah 
So Thursday all day, we we were vetting stages. Um, uh, that's a, a part of our process that we do. Um, it's been around since Jared was the owner. Basically, we run through all the stages uh, before the event to make sure that they flow right, to make sure that our ideas on paper actually come to, to a realization. So big part of volunteering, big part of our owing, and a big part of being our crew is the ability to go out there and actually test those stages out. So And now we video that process while it's happening. Yeah. So we can share with you guys the day before – which is what we've been doing, I think, all year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we have year. internal blooper reels, so when somebody <laughs> falls, we can laugh at them and then play it on repeat yeah. on our closed-circuit TV here in HQ. Um, so, yeah, Thursday uh, we uh, vetted stages, and I can't wait for that video to come out so you guys can see how much rain there was. It was, it was wild. It, and I don't think there was a single person that, that had anything that wasn't drenched. We all just embraced it at that point. There was no, there was no getting around it. I mean, when you guys, you know, you, like everybody kind of like timidly walked up to the first stage, like not wanting to get wet, and then your first thing you got to do is lay prone in the grass. Yeah, it's over. I didn't. It wasn't in the grass. It was in a like a, a, a puddle, puddle. <laughs> proper puddle. I, when I first laid down, I knew it was just like this is it. This is what I'm going to do all weekend. I'm just going to be soaking wet. Yeah. Um, but the stages were really fun. Uh, we utilize a lot of the property that we haven't used before. They've reconfigured some things, they being sawmill. So it was cool to see, you know, we always try to utilize as much of the facility as we can because mm -hmm. we want to make it different for you all. If you, if you come to an event at Sawmill, it should be different than an event in Utah. It should be different than an event in Arizona. It should be different than the last time we were at that event. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and that that's why, you know, we'll we'll use an, a venue for three, four, sometimes five years, and then we'll, we'll kind of chill out on it for a little bit like Meridian. Meridian's yeah. a great example of that. We we overuse so many things in Meridian that it just we couldn't. It, it was tough to come up with something new. It at loses that point. its luster after yeah. a while. Yeah. And I mean, if nothing else, just for me, just so I don't have to stare at the same shit over and over again. Well, it like it's boring. If you cut yourself in the uh, you're crawling through the tunnels the first time, you're like, oh, that was fun. I was crawling through the tunnels. The third time you do it, you're like, hey, maybe we should stop crawling through these freaking tunnels. Yeah, it's <laughs> tight down there. Uh, so. Thursday, we've edited stages all day, and we were really excited because it was supposed to stop raining at noon the next day. So I know we're looking at the weather reports, and the storm was coming, but I think at that time, it maybe was a Category 1, and it really hadn't been upgraded to anything serious yet. Um, we we hung out that night. We had our RO dinner, got everything planned, got all, all the marching orders for the next day. Um, Friday morning, I woke up at, at 4.30. Um, Did I, the sound? I, no, I mean, it was raining, but it was a nice rain. Like it didn't, you know, like it was a tin Just roof. Just a nice little trickle on That's a exactly what rain on a metal roof. A little bit yeah. of wind, you know, you can hear it out there, but nothing crazy. I mean, we, we lived in Florida. We lived in uh, on New Orleans. We've lived in hurricane zones for, for the past shit 15 years. Um, so this was nothing that was, was crazy to me at all. Danny, Danny is at the cabin. So there's, oh yeah, this yeah, property yeah, has three that. cabins on it. There's one main house in the middle and then down a very, very steep hill is one that's kind of down by the river. Yeah. Not kind of. It's down by the river. And then there's another one that's slightly above all the other two. Danny's texting me at 5 in the morning. She's like, hey, is it is it raining up there? I'm like, yeah, Danny, it's, it's Rain raining works. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're in the same area. She's like, yeah, the, I think the power's out. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is. And I looked up. The AC in my room was off. And I was like, yeah, it is. And then, like... I was like, did any trees fall down there? She's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure one fell. Just a little one. So I was like, okay, it's no big deal. Just a little bit of whatever. And then like an hour goes by and I text her back. I'm like, hey, you good? Because the rain started to intensify. The yeah. wind started picking up. And she was like, yeah. I was like, hey, why don't you come up to the main house? And then I opened the front door and I, I was like, Danny, I need you to come up to the main house right now. <laughs> And you need to come with us today. You can't stay here. There's nothing but trees out there. Yeah. They're pine trees. They have a root base of like six inches yeah. outside of the tree. So it's it's just a recipe for disaster. And two days of solid rain in the ground is doing nothing at yeah. that point. So. so for us, whenever we get a place, we uh, we do our best to make sure our, our crew, our staff, all the ROs, everybody's all together in the same property. It, um, it helps with us with planning and just, just for a ton of reasons. So... We all woke up. Um, again, I, I woke up at 4.30. I turned the Vince McMahon documentary on and just started watching that for a little bit and fell back asleep. So I know from 4.30 to whenever I fell asleep, maybe 5, we had power. Mm -hmm. And then I woke up again at 6 when my alarm went off, 
and we had no power. There was nothing. So and cell phone service had disappeared. Gone completely in that hour because I was texting yeah. fine with Danny, and then all of a sudden I looked down and it's just SOS or LTE with one bar, which yeah. is basically the same thing, I guess. So yeah. So um, you know, we we Nick came up and I, and I tissy i can't wait to uh for him to see this he came up he's like there's trees down everywhere we don't have a chainsaw we got to get the, the saws all so we can start cutting this stuff down i was like bro relax a little bit like let's we'll figure it out homie i got you <laughs> i didn't witness this so. oh oh it was it was funny um and uh, uh him and i walked down and we saw a big there was a big tree blocking our egress from from the property and um we were lucky that we had a, a, a good staff and a ton of us there and we all worked together and we got, you know, we didn't have anything to cut the tree. So we had to, we had to move the tree, a couple trees actually. So we got some branches out of the way so we could actually roll the tree and we, we got it out and pushed it down the side of a hill. And I think there was 10 of us total. Nine of us were out there moving that tree. Yeah. yeah like yeah. a nine person deadlift on a tree that when you look at it, you're like, come on guys, <laughs> it doesn't look that bad, but it is heavy. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I don't know, maybe a thousand pounds, 1200 pounds. It looked like a, like a. 20 pounds. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it was yeah. like this big around. Yeah. It was nothing. So we, um, we got it out of the way and we, we started pushing on, got to the end of the, the road that we were on, end of the, the uh, driveway. And there was another tree blocking the way, but that was just like the top of it. And then Brad had the great idea of ratchet strapping it. That was awesome. Like that was yeah. really smart. Hey, Brad, you are a uh, really smart dude. And a uh, hero. Yeah. This weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll get to it. So we, um, we departed the property and we were 15 minutes away from the range. 12 minutes from the end of the driveway. To 12 the range. minutes from the end of the driveway. To and the that range. is, that is unheard of for us unless yeah. we're staying on site, which is pretty rare. Right. Like Amanda does a amazing job of trying to find something to house all of these people that has more than one bathroom for 10 people. Right. And it's, it's so hard to find something close. Like you got like this list of criteria you need to meet at best. We're meeting one of them yeah. or two hey, of them. Air like, conditioning. Yeah. Not always. We'll take it. <laughs> so so we pulled out and um, got on the road, and we were pretty close to the highway, um, and then but cut underneath the highway and started down uh, one of the main the main roads to get to Sawmill, and uh, it became pl- clear pretty quickly that that the storm was worse than we thought it was. I thought originally it was just a couple down trees. Amanda had called because we had cell service where you could make phone calls. I messages weren't going through. Text messages would go through sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like it seemed like service was going in and out. So I called Amanda and we were talking about her arriving that day. And I had told her, yeah, get on the flight. You know, we'll, we'll be fine. We're going to have to push tune up start probably, but, but we should be good. Um, and we kept driving and then we started to see what, what had actually happened. We got about a quarter of a mile away from, from our, uh, our, our front door and, uh, there were trees everywhere. I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that like, obviously you and I were in a truck together. We had three other trucks behind us, which was all the rest of the crew. Just everybody split up into different vehicles. And I want to say like, I don't even want to say the words, Hey, do you think that it might be a possibility that we have to cancel this? Like the first hour of that trip, I didn't think that. Yeah. No, me either. The second hour I was like, uh, like, what's the possibilities we actually have to cancel this? Not because we can't do it, but, like, we can't get to the range. Every 300 feet, every 600 feet, there's another tree down, which we all have to get out and maybe be able to move one lane of it. Yeah. There were some local heroes in Lawrence that just a guy that happened to have a chainsaw, and he, would, he was on his motorcycle, I guess, and he would go down the street, find one, cut the ends of it off. So most of one lane was you know you could get through to where you could it was get passable through. and we're in very large trucks yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're you know we're and everybody we saw out there was um was somebody that lived around the area out there just trying to help trying to make a difference and trying to do what they could it was actually uh one of the most refreshing things i've seen in a yeah. long time outside of our sport was to see the local populace out there just trying to help one another nobody cared who you were they just wanted wanted help and Hopefully we, we lent as much of a hand as possible with, with the amount of people that we had. I think it, it definitely, for me anyways, one tick up on faith in humanity, which is somewhat low right now <laughs> just because of what's going on. But it was really cool to see. Nobody was even like... Nobody was mad or nobody worked Nobody was up talking, or to, talking to each other really. You just saw something, you walked up, 
just started grabbing stuff and they were like all right yeah you know and just move on to the next thing yep we, everybody uh, was just there because it, there was a there was a need yep for the roads to get cleared and there was no way any county officials were getting out there we saw the fire department one time the guy with his suspenders suspenders just kind of hanging out yeah. and he's like hey we only have a quarter tank of gas in that giant truck so that's done in 10 minutes yeah and he's like yeah we don't we don't have any any way to help so yeah it was um it, it was frightening and and you know but also like what you expect if you've been around a natural disaster you know that's what's going to happen there's not yeah everybody has this idea that there's going to be a ton of people out there to save you and to rescue you and and you know be there to protect you but that's have you been in a like a real natural disaster uh so i responded to the Deepwater horizon disaster um like after a uh, movie deep water horizon. Uh, that was an oil spill a dp oh. oil spill oh um I, I it wasn't like boots on the ground i'm not gonna have a tim waltz moment here like i went down uh, pretty <laughs> soon after it happened and it was like uh uh, I helped in logistics and managing all the Coast Guard personnel that we had on site down there and making sure that we knew where people were because, yeah. like, there was such a huge influx of people that we had to manage them and make sure that, like, things were actually happening on the beachfronts, so that oil was getting cleaned up, that people knew where things were going on. So you see, like, you know, people whose way of life is completely interrupted. I mean, I'm as you and I were driving down the road and we pulled up to that truck that was completely crushed in half, and I was like, Nick, open the door of the truck. Yeah. Like, what a terrible thing to have to, like... And that guy had some blacked-out windows, so it was even worse. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I opened that like, so timidly. You just, yeah, you just open it, and you're like, okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the airbags had deployed, and I yeah. immediately was like, uh, this is not going to be good inside here. It was just a weird situation, too, because that thing was on the side of the road. And the engine was still hot. Like, I yeah. put my hand... And, like, like it, somebody it just had just pulled running. up there, and the tree fell right afterwards, yeah. kind yeah. of a thing, yeah. so... Um, um, Anyways, it, it was so I've I've only been in that natural disaster. I've been I've like been somewhere and then something happens right after I left. Sure. But and then what happened in Atlanta snowpocalypse? I don't remember what year that was now, four or five years ago. That was the only two times. And that both of those times now you realize like you better be prepared for something. Yeah. You better have some provisions with you of some kind because we got a little bit lucky, but like nine people have to eat. Yeah, especially the Palacioses of the world. Like, if you don't feed him, you got a whole other problem. Oh to deal God, with. the whining, the whining. So, Gil can not eat for like three days, and well, as long as he's got like nicotine and some kind of monster or Red yeah. Bull or uh, no, he's a uh, rain. Um, yeah, so we continued on down that path. Uh, ended up getting stopped, like a hard stop, in one of the ways that we were going, where there were like five large large trees that it just yeah. we tried toe straps we saw toe straps pop it there was no way of getting those out uh and during that stop we adopted a dog we did not we found a dog um i uh, we were the first truck in, in our convoy so i saw this yellow lab just you know being very scared he was frightened we yeah, both terrified. got out he came and pinned himself to both of us just did not want you, you could tell he was very terrified Brad, what's that? Brad's last name? Mahoney? Uh huh. Is that right? Mahomey. Mahomey? It, it's Mahoney. Yeah. So, um, Brad already has a yellow lab, who's an awesome dog. You'll see him inside of his white Dodge. With the air conditioning on. With the air all conditioning the time. on, but he'll, he just sits there like such a good boy. Yeah. And this dog was almost identical to that yeah. dog. And I turned my head, like in my head, I'm thinking, what are we going to, we can't leave this dog here. Like, I'm going to never forget about this for the rest of my life and feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> So I turned my head and I go, Brad, he goes, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, okay, this problem is over. Let's move on to the next problem. And that, Brad opened his door and that dog went right in. Just He's like, right in the car. You're my new dad. Yeah, I've got a new home now. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I live here now. And he's such a good dog too. I can't good. wait to see him again. His name, what's his name? Uh, Tack. He Beautiful. named him Tack. Yeah. Beautiful. So it was uh, the crew plus one now. I think we had 10 with Tack. Um, and we... we sent half the group home to just make yeah. sure that people were safe and then us and uh ro and i continued on and chris hale and star um they we we all went and just tried to get to the range um at this but point this is our like third turnaround of like all right we've exhausted all these paths there's one more path that we could go uh, yeah it was like completely around to lauren's i think and then back through like it it was it took us an hour we had already been on the road for about the two one hours time, at that point. The one time we're 12 minutes from the range. Yeah, and our Thanks, commute's Amanda. still two hours. Yeah. 
and it was uh, still a two-hour commute. So we got, um, we we ended up getting to the town where we were going to be able to get to the range, um, and, and we were able to get there. And it was clear that a different person had been working on opening these roads up, um, just because it was just not connected to it. So we um, we ended up getting to the range. Um, and talking to Steve, the range owner, and all of his guys, which he's got like four, I think, permanent party out there, yeah. three maybe, um, yeah. they had all been out cutting trees all morning. Mm-hmm. So they – they Big trees. Big trees. Like yeah. they were out there. I mean, they, they have the equipment to be able to support a, a big, beautiful range where they're, they're, <laughs> they're geared up and stocked up for stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so they were definitely ready to go, and they went out there, and they supported and did everything that they needed to do. Yeah, and what's crazy is like when we got to the range – you couldn't tell that anything had happened because right. there was like six leaves on the ground. Yep. Right. And, and those guys were just cleaning that up, but the range looked perfectly fine. We could have ran the event. No problem. We don't need power to run the actual event. Right. The problem is, all I mean, the- at that time we were still probably like, in, it, we were 50, 50 on whether that event was going to go on or not. I think you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like when you sit there and you go, okay, we're here. There's no food. There's no fuel. There's no keeping your food cold, even if you did have it, or hot. Yeah. There was, unless you were one of those camper people, which we have, right? Like, we have, every time we have people come out and they're Dry in a camp sprinter van. And- yeah, and they're like, oh, I have everything I need. Yeah. Sure, I don't take a shower for three days, but everybody smells here. So, yeah. if you're not one of those people, which is most of most of our people, you're you're now in a spot. And then now, we... Not we. Nick has to make a call of whether to cancel the first tactical games event ever in five years, which has never happened. And not that not that that part of it is any kind of a concern, but canceling an event is not. There's a lot of there's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of logistical stuff that we had to to get through to to make it happen. But then at the end of the day, like like you were saying in the video that you that you uh, did for the community putting extra strain on a place like that is is not good for that community whatsoever. Never mind that we 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 run an event, it's a game. Yeah. We're not trying to ruin people's lives so we can play our game. It it was clear when we got to where we got and we started to understand how widespread the power outages were. Um, you know, we originally thought like maybe this is just a down local power line. This is this isn't too bad because we didn't have internet service to be able to like check i was calling amanda to talk with her and i think people were calling around but nobody knew what was happening because nobody had internet to be able to report what was happening so we 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 got out there and got to the range and that that was when we realized that a firefighter we saw the last group of people we talked to said that there were three counties around us that didn't have power and it turned out to be more than that i think way more i think there's like i don't know at at this time no power i think there were two and a half million people without power jeez um so it, you know, we, we were at the range and we made a very difficult call. And, and when Rose talking about the, the, the financial impacts, understand we're not just talking about like the loss that the tactical games had. We, we're talking about people flying in, yes, that's what uh, Airbnbs saying. being booked, you know, like people, we know and understand that you guys, you guys dedicate your resources, allocate resources to be able to come and compete in our events. So canceling this was not something that we took lightly or wanted to do at all we want to give you guys the show that you guys want we want to put on the competition that you guys want so it was a really tough decision to to make that choice but ultimately there was no freaking way we were going to be able to do it no i mean not- normally normally the motto is the show must go on right i didn't make that up somebody yeah. else did no, are you sure somebody you didn't make famous. that up yeah oh, okay so the show must go on and this time it was like the show must absolutely not go on this time yeah because it, do, it doesn't make sense. You, you know, there, there's no way for this to be, for us to be here having fun while there is so much suffering going on around us. Yeah. And, and you brought up the point of like fuel. If somebody would have driven in, there was no way, which we didn't know yet still uh, about the fuel and the, you, you know, we, we knew that three counties around us. So locally people at Airbnbs, people at hotels locally, we're not gonna be able to find fuel. Um, we, we still weren't even sure about grocery stores. So we end up linking up with some people and, and talking, having some conversations and we find out the power outage is, is really widespread. So um, we go back to the Airbnb with everybody else and, and we start making phone calls and talking and figuring out that like, this is, a, this was a pretty bad storm. Um, we, 
the guys, Nick, P, Gil, and Cullen all left and went to go find fuel for one of our trucks. So uh, I think they ended up driving about an hour. Yeah, it was outside to find a it was a ways a fuel like cash only fuel. And they had to wait, I think, a good yeah. Bit too. Oh yeah, at yeah. that time there was already lines around gas stations. So um, that night, it, so <laughs> noon, one o'clock. The uh, clouds went away, and it was beautiful for the rest of the day. Probably the best weather we've had all year. No bugs, because the wind had blown all the bugs away. Like hammock weather. Yep. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah. It was beautiful outside. Clear blue skies. Everything was was really beautiful. So we all sat out in the backyard. Again, just ignorant to anything that's happening, um, because we didn't have any connectivity to the outside world. And we uh, found a Target, um, a couple um, hanging yep. steel at the Airbnb that was in the backyard and we sat in chairs and, and threw rocks at the target. It was pretty fun. It was a good, that was a good game. I have footage from that. I may make a quick little <laughs> sizzle video. We'll declare a champion. So we, um, we, we came up with a game and sat there and played that. We thank God had, had purchased food the, the night before to prepare for the next couple of days. And we cooked everything over an open flame or not over an open flame. I guess we had a grill at the house and we cooked everything on some charcoal. And we basically just took, like what do you got what do you got what yeah. do you got yeah everybody threw in and we didn't really ration it because it was all gone within an hour but we ate that meal we're not a rationing group of, of, of folks no we had enough ice to like keep uh keep the energy drinks cold which i think was priority mm. and then we um I, I i don't know what else was in the cooler i had uh, gummy bears that i shared with everyone that's right, that's right. um there was uh i think uh tina had some tortillas from H-E-B. Shout out to H-E-B. H-E-B, the butter tortillas. We, wah, need, wah, wah, wah. we need a tortilla sponsorship. <laughs> and so, not Siete. What a sad story that is. Anyways. We won't talk about PepsiCo and Siete. but That's yeah. really sad. Unless PepsiCo wants to offer us some billions of dollars, in which case. In that case, yeah. I'll drink some Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the crew hung out. Um, we got up, went to the range the next day, and, and started our, our quick cleanup. Got everything kind of squared away and then um, started on the trip. You guys, I, I had a, a commitment that I was going to in D.C. You guys started the, the drive back and uh, that was where it really started. Uh, uh, we really started to understand the scale of what had happened and how, yeah. how much damage there was. I think I got to, first of all, it took me almost two hours to get to 85 from where we were at in Lawrence. And it was just, I would go down the road and I'm by myself in the truck and I'm going really slow because there's still trees, branches everywhere, power lines down. And then I get to a spot and every one of these roads is just a two lane road. Absolutely nowhere to turn around. If there was a driveway, it's covered with a tree now. So I have one direction that I can go forward is the only way. And so my first set of five power lines that were down cascaded across perfectly across the whole street. I sat there for five minutes to the point where I turned the truck off and I was like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to touch my tongue to this to, you know, like I assume there was no power on cause there's no power on yeah. anywhere. So I can't imagine just this one line is going to be hot, but, and, and I couldn't just like drive through it. I have this tall trailer now. Yeah. So I have to drive to a certain point, get it to cascade over the top of the truck, stand on the bed rails on the, you know, the side thing. And then, and then grab these and like jump rope them over our satellite, our Starlink that we have up there. Um, so like the first set of power lines, you're just like, one, two, three, go. And then you're like, oh, I'm still alive. <laughs> so that's what I did. And that happened four times. Um, one time I turned onto a street and then I saw the end of the street and I was like, oh. And I stopped and I started backing up. And there's now like whatever cars are around yeah. are behind me now and stuck. So it took a minute to, to get out of there and then finally got on 85 and I was like, all right, perfect. I got quarter tank left. I'll find a, a loves or a pilot gas station and I'll be home free. The fifth exit that I passed and the, you know, when the numbers are off and you're like, start having that little bit of panic flutter. Yeah. Oh yeah. So <clears throat> my son, Brant, shout out to Brant. Um, <laughs> lives uh in georgia and he was at the mall of georgia exit and i called him i was like hey man meet me there for lunch you know we'll hang out for a minute before i gotta finish this horrendous drive and he was like all right cool just let me know when you're coming my gps is telling me all this crazy stuff because i guess it's not connected so i had like 
60 miles left to him and it was like three hours and 20 minutes i'm like i don't see any traffic like this can't be right and then i called you i think yeah. at some one point of it so i'm going and that that gauge once you get to a quarter tank with the trailer that you can watch it start to go oh, down. Yeah. yeah yeah so i'm like and you can't let a diesel run out of run out of diesel it's like a much bigger problem than a gas vehicle so i called my son back and i was like hey man I might need you to drive like 50 miles and I need you to also go get some diesel somehow, stick it in your car and bring it for me. And he was like, of course he was like, no problem. Yeah. So I had that and I was like, worst comes to worst. I'll be fine. It's just going to take some time. And then I got like four more exits past that. And finally there was a gas station and, and like you got there and there was like no problems. Just fuel like normal, just crossing a, crossing a, an exit or a state line and everything was totally fine. Yeah, so we um, we left the range, and my original flight was out of out of uh, Augusta. So we drove what was typically like an hour and forty five minutes, and it, it took us a good bit to get there. Same thing, just driving through South Carolina and seeing the damage that was out there, and there w- it became very evident like there are power poles down everywhere. Yeah. This is not going to be a quick fix. This is not something you know a couple days from now this is going to be done. This is going to take a couple weeks to get squared away. Um, we saw gas lines all over the place, food lines. Um, we did stop at one gas station just to see if they had anything available because there wasn't. We actually pulled up to a gas station that was receiving a shipment of water and stuff like that that had um, lawn, like cops out there guarding the water being dropped off. That was like a little bit surreal to see, but again, like a scene out of a movie. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it machine was a, guns protecting bottled water. They were concerned. I about want my microplastics getting overrun. <laughs> Uh, so people like, you know, and they, they waved us off and, you know, whatever. Um, so we continued down, we got to Augusta and then, uh, Augusta didn't have any power. So, um, we got down there, we realized that it was not going to, not going to happen to me flying out of Augusta because I needed to stay the night there and fly out the next morning. Um, so we ended up, I switched my flight and then I was flying out of Greenville, which is where those guys had, had been switched out of. So we drove from Augusta to Greenville, which again was like another two and a half hour drive. And, uh, finally, by the time we got to the airport, this was wild. So Chick-fil-A was open when we got there, right? It was a Saturday. So yeah, Chick-fil-A was open. We get up to the counter and all they had left were nuggets. And they're like, Hey, um, we only have one bag of nuggets left. Like we're going to run out of food here today. Immediately a fight at the airport. (laughs) The Chick-fil-A at the airport ran out of food at like three o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. So like there, I mean, I know it's a Chick-fil-A, but like those places stay stocked. They're not just like buying food just for today. You know, they keep stock, I'm sure, for at least maybe a weekly delivery. So they were, you know, they were in a tough spot. Yeah. And um, you can't get Chick-fil-A. What can you get? Jeez. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it was definitely, we got out of there. We got out of there. Everybody got out of there safe. Uh, Brad drove home. Chris Hale drove home. Everybody got out of there safe, which was good. So we're very grateful that the, the team all made it out of there. Um we are going to be uh, rescheduling the event. We announced it for everybody. So for the rescheduled event, it's going to be uh, October 26th and 27th. Um, we've got that common sawmill, Lawrence, South Carolina. Um, that competition is going to be open to the public now. Obviously, first uh, priority is anybody that signed up before. We have had some deferrals, so anybody new that's interested, uh, if you want a last chance to qualify for nationals, or if you can't make nationals and you want a last chance to qualify this year, or to compete this year, definitely going to be a good opportunity. That Listen, we built a we built a hell of a match out there. The amount of messages that I've received, the amount of messages that Amanda's received. About, oh, this event sold out. This was my last chance. This is your chance. Yeah. Get signed up. Come out to Sawmill. It's going to be a great time. The The stages are really cool, and we're, we'll still be releasing those, um, you know, the week of. Yep. Week of the event. And it's a cool video. It's just rain the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> this is Nick and everybody else just flopping around on the ground in the rain. It's lovely. Uh, so we do have volunteer and competitor slots available for anybody that's interested. We'd love to see you out there. We'd love to still put on a good match. I know and apologize for those that couldn't make it, um, for those that were looking to qualify last chance that now can't make it because of work schedules and all the different things that come up. I, I know how big of a pain in the ass that is. So we apologize. And again, it's not something we wanted to do. Uh, you got what was, else? what was cool though, is that Obviously, since you and I were out of pocket, essentially, because we can't answer emails, you, they won't load, none of that stuff. Amanda's getting the all of that stuff, like, flooding in. And the amount of positive support from our community 
was overwhelming. I thought it wasn't going to be that good. Yeah. I thought people were like people were going to be upset cuz people are out some money. Yeah, you can it's an act of God. So if you didn't show up to your Airbnb or if you didn't get into your hotel or even your flight, they will refund you. They have to. Yeah. But a lot of people were literally showed up at the range at the same time as we did. People expecting to be there for tune up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it wasn't, I mean, we didn't make that call until, you know, we had been at the range for, for a couple minutes and started talking to people and figuring out the scale and scope of things. So yeah. again, apologies for that. And uh, we hope everybody is safe. We hope everybody in our community is safe. We know that there are tons of people out there that are not safe right now. I think the last number that I saw was like 700 people are still missing. I, I don't recall what the death toll was. I, I think I had saw 15 a couple days ago and then 60, and I'm not quite sure what it is at right yeah, now. It's, but It's not great, whatever it is. It's, uh, you know, and we're, we're doing, we're trying to do our part to help that community. You know, at the end of the day, we, like I was saying, we play a game. Yes, it's a very serious game, but it's still a, a thing that people do for fun. Right. So, and we occupy a lot of these places. We go to all these places. We need North Carolina and South Carolina to survive so we can go back there again. So we're trying to do our part in helping those communities uh, through some through some fundraising. Yeah. So uh, um, this Saturday here at Tactical Games Training Headquarters, we are going to be doing a fundraiser. Um, we're going to be... Uh, doing a fundraiser for the Helene um, recovery support. So we're really excited to uh, um, to be able to open our space up to other people. 100% of the proceeds that we receive for anybody coming to work out that weekend will be donated to um, the support fund. Uh, so it's $25 to be able to come out and, and participate. Um, we've got three class times. If we need to open more, we'll gladly open more. Um, really the goal here is just to bring people together and, and to garner some support for those that are, that are out there suffering right now. People that still need to be saved, people that need um, resources for the next couple months, anything that we can do to help. Um, there's a lot of nonprofits out there that actually do give a shit that aren't taking money that aren't undercutting that aren't keeping any of the funds for themselves. Instead, yeah. they're, they're putting a hundred percent of those resources to, uh, the end users where they're needed. So, um, we've been very lucky in some of our partners, uh, under armor, um, concept Two, and even black rifle reached out and they want to get involved in helping out with, with this fundraiser. So, uh, outside of just in the gym, we are going to make the, the workout public. There is an online link to donate. So if you want to participate in the workout, spread awareness about um, what we're doing um, to be able to just bring more people into it. Uh, we've always, since I started in, in the fitness um, section of fitness and, and in CrossFit, done relief workouts as fundraisers. Um, it's a way to bring people together to, to, um, show commonality, to show support for those people that are out there. We know that there's people out there that are suffering. Um, right now, this is what we can do. We can all open up our space. We're also going to provide 50% of all the proceeds from anything sold in the shop. Every time we have an event here, we sell things in the shop. It's just what happens. So instead of us keeping that money for ourselves, um, and for the company, we're going to donate that money to, yep. um, to the relief fund as well. So if you guys can support in any way, uh, we'd love for you to we'll release the workout sometime this week probably tomorrow uh to the public so everybody can see it and please take advantage of it share it spread the word around let's get more people out there doing this and, and donating the money for for the event um what else you got um for for what we're talking about now i think that's that's probably about it um we've got a bunch of uh new podcasts that are going to be coming out um nationals podcast we've got a media podcast we'll be doing um lots of more leg up with gill which are very good short segments like three to five minutes long that are very helpful to you to you guys that uh compete um, and so if you're if you're looking to be able to sign up online for the podcast or for the competition, uh, we've got a link in our link tree. We've got access on our website. So not the competition for the workout this weekend. If you want to sign up, slots are limited. So please, uh, please sign up so that we if we need to open additional classes in the afternoon, we can. We want to make sure we have the resources available to be able to support that. Um, so uh, online, TTG, the tactical games dot com or at uh, uh, our Instagram page and in, in our link tree are places that you can locate those. And I know I've also got it in the uh, in the highlights of the stories. I went ahead and saved it. So it's the first highlight in there. Uh, sign up for the classes one. And the second one is if you can't make it and you just want to donate or if you just want to sit on the couch and donate, it's fine. It's fine. 
Yeah, and and uh, um, I know Tulsi's got that link in her link tree as well. So if you don't follow us, I don't know why you'd be watching this if you don't follow us. But if you guys want to just make a donation directly to uh, um, to the support fund, it, it's accessed through Tulsi's Tulsi Gabbard's uh, Instagram and social channels as well. Uh, thank you to everybody that that was there. So ROs for that event: Will Hildebrand, um, Star, is, Star, Jeff Hove, Jeff Hove, Brad Mahoney, Mah Mahoney, Chris. Chris, Chris Hale. Chris Hale. Uh, Cohen. Nick was going to RO. We had Gil. Tina yeah. was around. She helped. Yep. Danny helped. So big thank you to everybody that was yep. out there this weekend. It was and, all uh, hands on deck. Thank you for, for pushing through it with us. <laughs> We're we, deleting this podcast. We appreciate you guys, and uh, <laughs> we'll see you all soon. Cut. Okay, no dogs in here. Holy that shit, shit. That shit is unreal. That was fucking annoying. <laughs>